y'all, y'all, y'all better stop. Y'all better stop, okay? Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mark Janard Jr. And if you're new here, I do cyber-related videos. Please feel free to relax and enjoy the content. Like this video. Comment on this video. Subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload new videos. Today, we're going to talk about a type of cyber attack called brute force attack. You got it. Yes, we are cracking folks' passwords today. Let's get into it. We going dark. So what you're seeing now is we're downloading the rockyou.txt password list. And the reason why we're doing this is it will be used to crack the victim's passwords. The URL decoder at the beginning is used because Google's URLs are not usable by the wget command line uh, tool. The command WC with that line, uh, and then I, I believe it's a L or rocku.txt confirms the uh, file line count uh, to make sure it was downloaded correctly. Give me one second. Give me one second. All right, so uh, a brute force attack, if you don't know, is an is a, a brief a brute force attack is a hacking method that uses trial and error to crack passwords, login credentials, and encryption keys. It is simple yet reliable tactic for gaining unauthorized access to individual accounts and organization systems and networks. So you'll be surprised that this kind of attack is uh, more successful uh, than you think. And there have been some attacks that were affected by brute force attacks. Are you ready? Dunkin' Donuts in 2015. We have a company called Alibaba in 2016. We have Magento in 2018. We have Northern Irish Parliament in 2018. We have the Canadian Revenue Agency in 2020. So there has been some juggernauts of companies that have been affected by brute force attack. And I can't believe y'all did Dunkin' Donuts like that. I love Dunkin' Donuts. Hey, y'all better stop. Y'all better stop, okay? Y'all better stop. Y'all leave Dunkin' Donuts alone. They didn't do nothing to you, but serve uh, them nice glazed donuts. I take offense to that. Okay, so uh, we're we're now pinging the uh, the victim host and port scanning victim host. We're doing this to make sure that the victim is online and the victim's SSH port is open. And what did you guys want with Dunkin' Donuts anyway? What, to, to, to stop serving glazed donuts? I mean, I understand the, uh, the Canadian revenue uh, company, but come on, Dunkin' Donuts? Write in the comment section, are you a Dunkin' Donut a connoisseur like moi? Okay, so we are brute forcing the uh, victim host SSH via Hydra tool. This is a tool that can be used to uh, commit brute force attacks. And as can be seen, the root account's password is beautiful. Now, remember what root is. Root is basically, think of a house, right? Think of a house and the homeowner. The homeowner it has root access to the house. Now, every computer, well, not let me not say every, but most computers they have root uh root privileges so basically uh, a root user of a computer they can delete files they can uh <laughs> they can they can do some they can really they have full autonomy to change the internal uh functions of the system so if you have a if you own a company you don't want to give uh you want to have root access you don't want somebody to have root, root access to your comp to your company someone that uh, especially if you are the owner so one of the reasons why root access is so important is because a hacker comes into your system and becomes the root you root user so now they're in your systems and they can do what, basically anything that they want they have full control you don't want that and this kind of attack you'll be surprised it's it's more easy to be executed because there are so many softwares uh and 
I would point to uh, Kali Linux operating system. Uh, they have some brute force um, softwares that you can use and play with and have fun. So what you're seeing now is we are logging via SSH into, vic into victims host, confirming user account and IP. And as can be seen, the SSH session is indeed from victim host. All right. Okay, so now we are getting the victim's password, right? We're getting the victim's password and shadow file. And one 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 of the uh, popular brute force attack tools is John the Ripper. So the the tool uh, John the Ripper will be used to crack uh, the Linux passwords of the victim. In order to do that, it needs a specific syntax uh, that gets generated by the unshadow tool. I remember back in college a couple, uh, you know, some odd years ago, we used John the Ripper. It's a nice tool. We, we used it for some, some projects in IT. Now, give me one second. <clears throat> so we, I, I, I said the term SSH. So SSH or secure shell is a network communication protocol uh, that enables two computers to communicate. Uh, HTTP or hypertext transfer protocol, which is the protocol used to transfer hypertext such as web pages and share data. Just trying to just trying to give you all these definitions. I know, you know, what I'm saying I'd be using these things and remember IP address. So basically IP address is uh, each computer that has access to the Internet uh, has an IP address. Is basically a unique identifier that tells the internet that there is information required, information being communicated or required by a certain computer, which is your computer. <clears throat> so let me see something. So, uh, not only is it John the Ripper, if you are curious and wanted to know some other brute force attack softwares, we have GoBuster, we have BruteX, we have uh, DIR Search, so Deer Search, we have Calo, we have SSB, we have uh, THC Hydra, Burp Suite, Patator. P A T A T O R P Patata. You know, I you know, hey, you know. I, I, I didn't make the name, folks. I didn't make the name. Okay, so we are cracking the unshadow file using John the Ripper tool. And the output shows the crack passwords. So beautiful for root user, smiley for Cali. And don't let, uh, you know, Cali Linux is, is, is just an operating software, just like Windows. So it's, you know, don't flip your way. What is Cali? It's just an operating system like Windows. So we are logging into Kali user using the brute force password, confirming user account and IP. And the brute force attack was, uh, so. Look at 
this, right? The brute force attack was done successfully. The Kali Linux user was compromised. Confirming to check everything is as expired. This is how they got Dunkin' Donuts. This is how they got Dunkin' Donuts. This is how they got the Canadian Revenue Company. This attack right here. Could you imagine? Don't you still know Dunkin' Donuts for me anymore, okay? You leave Dunkin' Donuts alone. So as you see, it has been executed perfectly. That is a brute force attack. And don't you flip your wig because in the coming days, I'll show you how to recover from a brute force attack. That was the brute force attack. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button right below the video and subscribe by clicking the big red button right below the video. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then you will probably enjoy these videos that's on the screen right now. So if you click on the screen right now, you can watch those. Do you have a cyber attack you want me to cover? Write it in the comment section below. Also, click the notification bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications when I upload new videos. Lastly, please feel free to watch other videos on this channel. Wait. You don't know where to subscribe? Click my face. I'm smiling at you. I'm wearing a dark shirt. Dark blue shirt. Click on that face. I'm smiling. Stay safe, Hack Pack. Please feel free to watch, like, and comment other videos on this channel. Subscribe now.